Welcome folders and in this tutorial we are going to look at how to cut a perfect, I should say, perfect square. Uh, three methods that I know of. Um, so we'll jump right into it. Now this video is called, or uh, probably called how to cut a perfect square. Um, but it won't be perfect, it will be like 95% perfect because as you all know it's impossible and illegal to cut perfect squares but the more you practice, the more you'll bump up to like 97, 98% and go from there. But the main thing is, you do not need a perfect square for most models. If it's box plate, you don't need a perfect square. It can be 90% perfect, you can still use it. But if, it's, if it needs a diagonal, like both diagonals at the start, then it's important that you try and get it as neat as possible so it will be easier in the long run. So, the first method, let me just clear some space. The first method is, now, there's, this works quite well, but there is some cons to it. First of all, we have our test sheet. It's easier to record it like this, whereas I don't need to actually record myself cutting large squares. So it's easier to show this as example. So we have a M. A imperfect square and then we have what we need as a template this could be an already perfect square which I've just wrote perfect square it's not even a square but we've got a perfect square as an example you could use like a wooden template um, like plastic ones I'm, I don't actually have any so they are optional to use as well but we'll use this as an example we have a perfect square and we have four bits of blue tack at each corner. Now this is a method that I done when I first started cutting squares. It was basically the only way I knew how to cut squares and so this is what I done and it, it, it's worked. But you need something that's already perfectly square. Now this can either be paper or templates. Um, if you've even got sheets that you'll never use then you could take your time, try and cut those as perfect as possible and then just use those sheets for this method because you probably never use them. Um, so first of all, you're going to take your perfect square as a template, stick it onto the paper that you want to cut, and then straight forward, you would just cut around it, of course, using your ruler. Um, whatever it is you use to cut your T roller, right angled roller, and then just cut around it. But I'm just going to do this as example because it's much easier. And it's important that when you do this method that you try not to cut into the perfect square. So try not to cut the top sheet, otherwise it won't be that perfect. Now I did go through quite a lot of sheets when doing this because it only takes one minor mistake and then you've cut into the top sheet and then you probably can't use it again. So you'd basically just cut all around it. But you do it in four straight complete cuts. And then just peel it off. And there you go, you'll have your almost perfect square ready to fold. So that is method one. The only downside is you can only use whatever template you have in perfect squares, so if you only have these and 30 centimeters, then you can only cut 30 centimeter squares. You can't cut 29, you can't cut 31. It can only be 30, or whatever size sizes that you have, you can only use those for squares. So there is pro, uh, pros that you'll get perfect squares, but there's cons to only what sizes you can cut. But it's a really good method. Um, I still use this occasionally if I can't get a super perfect square, but it works really well. So that is method one. Method two is we have an imperfect square. So what we want to do is on the cutting mat, if yours has, I think all cutting mats have um, like little squares. Let me see how well this. So first of all you want to get your paper and line it up 
as somewhat neat as possible. I'll, I'll do it this way as an example. You want to try and line it up as straight as possible with one of the lines on the, the mat. And it's important that you have your paper basically at a 90 degree angle, not like this, because when you cut a straight line, then your, your square will be angled, so you'll end up with a smaller square. Let me show you as an example. I'll do the, the imperfect side on the top side and the, the right side on the bottom. So let me just... Let me just do like this. So just say you cut this amount off. So just say you cut this amount off. This is a straight line, but it's not 90 degrees. It's quite hard to cut a 90 degree line when all sides of the paper are, um, aren't perfect, but try your best as possible because when you cut this off, and I'm just going to line up the roller, try to, these are this way because the tripod's in the way. I'm just going to line it up and then see how much that will affect our square. Let me just uh, draw this one again. And then you can see already from the first crease that when we cut off the next edge, we will lose a big amount of paper. So it's something that you need to consider. If you, if you can afford to cut paper, uh, lose paper, then... So, because we have lost this amount, let me zoom in, we need to start the crease as close to this point as possible. And uh, while keeping it on, while, while keeping it 90, 90 degrees on this line. So let's just bring it down. So about there. So, as you can see, we have done that, but we have a large amount of paper here and a large amount of paper here. Uh, it doesn't matter too much here, uh, a wee, a wee, it does a wee bit actually, but if you can notice that the square is at an angle, so we're instantly going to lose this amount of paper and this amount of paper. So we're going to lose extra paper that you may need for whatever it is you're making with the paper that you're cutting. So if we flip over and then do it on this side, but I'm going to try and keep it as neat as possible. So let's just... I'm going to line it up with this mat first. You just want to try and get it as... Like that won't help. Better this way. Maybe like this. So we want to try and keep it as many degree as possible. So this is much better than this side. We don't have too much on one end, not enough on the other. We have basically the exact same amount of paper going all the way along. So if we do the exact same and line up the ruler, let's see how much we will be wasting. That's as close as possible on that side. And then let me just line it up. Like that. So if you can how do I get a pen there? I have no idea. So if you can see from this we have much less paper wasted on either sides. So the both sides and then the bottom compared to here, whereas we have a lot of paper wasted on all three sides. So the paper, the size is going to be much smaller. Let's just quickly measure this to see the difference and how big. One, yeah, how 
like the square so we can cut. So 14 centimeters to um, 15.4. So we're getting near enough one and a half centimeters bigger. All because we made sure that this line was completely straight. If it's at an angle, either angle, then we're instantly going to lose paper. You know, and you're going to end up with a much smaller square than you anticipated. So, first of all, we're going to cut this extra paper off. So th this is what you would do first. You would cut off this side first. And then you'd line your ruler up with this edge and then make these two creases. And then from here, this is what I do. I fold this edge to edge. Why have I got ink up? the hell? That's pen and rubbish. It can't be that pen, is it? Anyway, I have no idea how that happened. So we have, uh, we'll fold this edge to this edge. And then what I do is, because I don't make full diagonals, um, if I was, then I would probably make it all, but I would uh, touch up after this. So I'll fold these two edges to make sure they're perfectly aligned and then I'll make a pinch right here and then I'll get my right angle driller, line it up and then cut straight. So, okay, see the piece I've missed in this as example. And I'll line it up and then cut, then cut this off. And there we go, we have a almost perfect square. And this is perfect for insects because you don't need a fully perfect square. And it's basically good to go for most models. Yeah, it's actually not bad, it's still a wee bit off. But then you can touch it up from here on. So that is method two, that is what I do for all my sheets. Now method three is we're going to jump straight to the point where we cut three sides on method two. This is going to be some rough straight-ish lines. Now this method creates the diagonals. So both diagonals it makes. You don't necessarily need to do this, but it's easier to line up. So now we have this. Again, we're just going to fold edge to edge. And then we're going to make the crease. Like that. Then we're going to take this point, fold to this point, and then also make the crease. Now we are going to line up with the grid. Um, how do people? How was it that was done? Yeah, you could do it like that. So there's a few ways to do it. You can either line up with one straight edge, and then line it up so it's halfway between the squares. In fact, it's probably easier if I just take this off and show. I'll put it back on with the screw. So um, it's quite hard to shoot. So we've got it lined up here, and then we're, we've got it so this point is basically going through all these, all the diagonals. 
on the square and in the mini squares. So like that. And then once you do that, you would get your ruler and line it up with all the diagonals. So I'd make sure it's all in the center. Like this. this is probably the trickiest method because one minor uh, fraction of a difference will give you an imperfect square. So you need to make sure that it's going through all the diagonals. Like that. And then just double check to make sure it's all lined up here. Even though it's not lined up here, just make sure it's all lined up. And then you would cut. Another method is if we have the point on somewhere on the on the on the on the, on the mat, and then you would make sure that each edge goes through the diagonals on both sides. So this would be the pivot point. So just hold it like that, and then just I can't even turn it. So it looks fine there. And it's, it's still on the line. It probably could come up a wee bit more. So you'd probably rotate it back. And then once you feel you have the, that lined up symmetrically, then you would get your ruler and line it up with one of the, the lines on the mat. So let me just try and so let me just say this uh, this line here, for example. You line up on the left side, you'd then line up on the right side, and then once this is perfect, this point here, and then you've got both sides perfect here, and then this is lined up, then you would cut. So let me put this back on. And then once you have it all lined up, which is, yeah, that's fine, move the pen. Then you would just cut right here. Now it's, it's easier to cut the three sides first uh, before you get to this point, otherwise all sides will be rough, so it will be a bit more tricky to be accurate. Now once you cut it all off, hopefully, if you've done everything correct, you'll have a perfect square. So this side will be perfect, because this is the first side that you folded the diagonal. So it's the other side, which is, as you can see, it's off a wee bit. So the more precise that you do this method, the easier it will be. And but I personally never do that. I always do uh, method two, and occasionally method one. If, if method two doesn't fully line up, um, yeah. So I would definitely go with method two because this is what I've always done since the like the first year of cutting paper and it's never let me down. If I need to line things up even more, I will slightly trim off parts here and there until I am satisfied I've got a better square that, I, that will make it easier to use. And yeah, I'll go from there. So that is the three methods. I, you probably all already know these anyway, but it's just to put them all in one video and let you go from there. So hopefully that you learned something from this video and hopefully you are able to cut better squares because it's so annoying when you cut a square and it doesn't line up. You spend half an hour cutting it, trimming it here and there, you fold the diagonal and it's off like three millimeters at the corner. It's it's honestly heartbreaking because you need to try and you need to either decide should I try and fix it again? spend more time to fix it or go with it. Am I confident enough that I can work with this small imperfection? And it's also important to know what paper, uh, what model you'll be making. Does the model have diagonals for the first steps? Do you need to fold both diagonals on the first step? If it is, then make sure that you're super comfortable, that it is perfect or near enough perfect. If it doesn't, then you're good to go.
I mean, all these methods are perfect for insects because insects never use full diagonals. When will insect ever need you to make diagonals other than maybe finding like a lens or some reference to start the grid? Other than that, you don't need them. So don't worry about a perfect square of insects. It is nothing relevant. You don't need to worry about that at all. So anyway, that is the video. I hope you learned something from this and hope you cut perfect squares. So thank you so much for watching everyone.